All right, so I'm out here today with my 1842 Springfield. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, target shooting. You see a target out there. Uh, this is relatively uh, about 25 yards. Um, I've shot traditional cartridges like this one out of it. Um, this one here is a bucking ball, but I did shoot uh, single lead ball cartridges. And I got really good grouping, but it was low and to the right. And of course, with these cartridges, you know, the ball is incredibly undersized, you know, to make for ease of reloading, especially in a battle scenario. But I'm trying to get more accuracy out of, uh, out of this gun today. So I'm going to do a patch and ball setup. And um, I'll be using, I believe it's a 0.66 lead ball. There it is. You know, nothing special. You got a little bit of sprue on top. But um, I want to see, I want to see what we can get out of this thing. And I know I'm probably making some traditionalist cringe right now, but hey, if I can make it more accurate, my goal is to to get a deer with it. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go out in the woods and shoot at an animal. I want to get this animal, so make the most ethical shot possible. All right, so got my little powder measure. I got it set to uh, 80 grains. Let's see what we can do with that. All right. You know, in shooting this gun in the past, I feel like it really liked the the 80 grain charge. I'm just gonna level that off. Go ahead and dump our charge in. We already got a, a lubed up patch here. Put that right on top. This is where the traditionalists get pissed at me. I'm gonna go ahead and put our sprue, our sprue up. Just like that. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and send this bad boy home. And hopefully, get a decent, decently accurate shot out of it. Sounds good to me. Awesome. Of course, I'm not using a shooting bench. I'm shooting offhand because there are no shooting benches in the tree stand. All right, let's see what we did. All right, so pretty good shot, 25 yards, a little high, maybe a little to the right, but I mean, freehand 25 yards, that's a vast improvement over the cartridges. Um, I'm definitely impressed, and of course the power behind this thing. Uh, actually, it actually knocked this <laughs> this whole maple log straight back um, but we'll go ahead and take a few more shots um, see if I can't pull it in towards the middle but right now yeah for hunting purposes definitely gonna do patch and ball
All right, so my third shot, I don't necessarily know where it hit. The second one did pretty good. It was on the plate. I feel pretty good at 25 yards with that. Um, but I'm getting fouling in between shots that I'm not cleaning. Um, I don't have the, uh, the jag yet for this size barrel. Um, but I will be getting that, and I'm also getting my own uh, ball molding equipment. I'd like to use my own that I make, and that way each one is consistent, and uh, I'll do a more thorough testing later. But in the meantime, got this buck and ball cartridge. Uh, we'll go ahead and shoot the target and see what it does. I think it'll be fun. That's that fouling I was talking about, but this should shoot pretty good here. All right, so upon closer inspection, that was my first shot, second shot, and I almost, yeah, I did. I doubled up on that shot. So my third shot was actually in there. Um, and my fourth with the bucking ball, I think my large ball might have hit here. There's definitely a 31 millimeter ball from that buck shot here. Um, but all in all, I mean, it's <laughs> it's relatively on target. I mean, you got your your double ups here and your one here at 25 yards. I'll take that all day, all day long. That's all four of them. Awesome. Yeah, for a second there, I thought I was I thought I was doing pretty poor, but I did see the the log move every time I hit it. Um, very cool. Very cool. good to know all right well i'll get back at it one of these days and do a couple more test fires and see what happens with my own cast balls till next time